that unique. No, the, but only, it, the only thing of it is, is I'm willing to say it. <laughs> right, and others aren't. And others aren't. <laughs> well, that's why I want to say, yeah, because there's, it, I can't take enough notes. I'd rather focus and then review the video later. Well, you can, you can do that, or I'm going to say of it is, is, is that let's just get together more frequently. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I, I do want to get together more frequently. But, but, um, but because of that wave, I, you're right, there is an opportunity wave coming. And but it may not be as big as you think because we don't know what type of follow-up programs there's going, there, go, there is going to be. Yeah, there might be a long tail. Too. I remember when, when you and I talked about COVID. And, and the first week of COVID, and I said, this thing's going to have a long tail. And I thought a long tail was... September, October, and here we are, you know, still. Well, I, th I, I thought that the pain would come sooner. I'm not real sure that we've seen the financial pain yet. Oh, we, we've, we've seen the pain, and the government has pumped all kinds of money into the marketplace. And, and there's a lot of people who haven't felt the pain, haven't felt any pain. No, because we're... we're we're living this illusion of, of good economy. That's it's an perfect, illusion. perfect term. What do you think those consequences are going to be? Well, the question is going to be in any of this of it is 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 what is the price level that makes sense when we can do business again? Uh, you know, and you know, Sam and everybody is concerned about inflation. They should be. I mean, all these. Did money. you take a finance course in your MBA coursework? DeVry. They, you know, they, so yours is from DeVry? DeVry, yeah. It might as well not happen. I mean, they, the, the education they give you is rapid. You know, it's, well, but irrespective of that, I might did have you a, have a finance course? I probably did, yeah. Do you remember the three components that make up rate of return slash interest rate? Did anybody, so you never sat in a finance class that they talked about the risk-free rate of, that, that returns slash interest rates are built up through the risk-free rate of return, which is typically U.S. government notes, bonds, that type of thing, and it's typically short-term. Then you add to that the inflation factor and then you add to that the risk factor. The problem of it is, is, is the risk-free rate of return today is this. Yeah. The inflation factor is virtually this. And so the only way that you get any return is to go way out on the risk curve and take risk. Could there be... Okay. I'm going to tell you in advance, but hopefully you don't lie to me. You do not own any Bitcoin. No. No. I don't. Um, I, I don't understand it. You know, I learned a long time ago not to get into stuff I don't understand. And I'm having a hard time, you know, scaling real estate, which well, I think well, I understand. But you see, Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies are very, very easy to understand. I haven't taken the time. I mean, I know that there's a big, there is a future in blockchain. I, I, that technology here, is here to stay. Block, blockchain technology, I won't disagree with. But blockchain technology then saying that you've created an algorithm of which you can only create 21 million tokens and they are going to be worth whatever some idiot's going to pay. Bitcoin is based upon the gullibility of your fellow man yes. and somebody's ability to continue to tell the story and there be another gullible fool. Think about the poor idiot that bought into that story and bought Bitcoin at $64,000. Waiting for it to come back now. <laughs> Well, he, I don't know he, he's now. probably washed out. Yeah. He may have been on margin or whatever, or, you know, gee, I'm, I'm going to buy this at 64 because it's going to be 65 tomorrow. I will have made $1,000 and look how smart I am. 
I don't know where it closed today. And I guess it trades 24 hours a day, but the last tick I saw it was at 36,000. Yeah, again. I saw it in the 30s as well, yeah. Well, it was down to 32 something Monday morning. I don't keep up with that. Well, yeah. you know, again, CNBC's on my phone or on my television at home, you know, virtually 24 7 or 10, 12 hours a day for sure. So. CNBC, yeah, they, I don't like CNBC. They choose their, their they choose their stories. Everybody chooses their stories. Everybody chooses what they're going to say when they're going to say it. My problem in life of it is, is I don't choose well. <laughs> so we, we can have a lot of philosophical stuff here, but um, I don't want to say that we've gotten in a ditch, but we've got off on a bit of a rougher patch here on a few deals. But, and so, you know, but I, it's not going to totally disrail us, but I have no interest in any type of transaction on either one that we've talked about doing partials on at the numbers that you were talking. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the double wide in a park, you know, I was going to kind of go along with that just as both of us to have a learning experience on a double wide, or excuse me, as on, on a partial, on and a that's partial, what... Yeah, that was going to be our first partial. And, and, that was go, and, and I was just kind of going along and saying, well... You know, it's not going to be so much money. Uh, we'll put the documents together somehow that Yoander understands he's not going to screw with me. You know, that he's putting everything else at risk right along with this. And I, I'll let him replenish his cash. But today, I, you know, the more I've thought about it, of it is, is there's probably not a higher risk deal than, uh, than holding paper on, yeah, on something in a mobile home park where there is a $600 a month plus maintenance fee just to be there. I don't know what it is. She pays it, but yeah, but, but yeah. 400, 500, yeah. 600, whatever the number is. Mm -hmm. We know that it's north of four. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's north of four. It might even be north of five because it's a double wide. Yeah. So, so I mean. No, it, you're right. It's there. I mean, the, you know. The asset is not. It's not very... Uh, well, the asset it. comes with a tremendous liability is the problem. Right, that holding cost inside the park that can be very strict. Yeah. Yes, of which when you quit paying, they hold all the cards. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then... The and they don't, they don't have to be very good cards, it's just they hold them all. No, they have a lot of leverage. Yeah, they do evict you and they'll... It's, yeah, they have well, and you can't... I mean, many people that that have made tremendous amounts of money made in real estate and was willing to deal with the elements. They made it because they got a mobile home park, they pulled in some homes or allowed people to park their homes, then they people got behind in the rent and then they was able to attach to the to the mobile home and finally, everybody else that had an interest in it had to say, well, it's too damn expensive for me to play here. Take it. I don't care. My credit's no good. So, speaking of, I got an update on the Divine trailer. Divine, Divine, Divine. You, you went down and was driving oh, by. Oh, yes. $35,000. Yeah. yeah, what happened to that guy? I, I talked to him, but he wanted too much. Well... Yeah. And he said he he's, was going to do the deal himself. He he doesn't have any money. He can't do the deal himself, and he's an idiot. Well, he talked a big game. I was okay, okay. Buddy. Well, okay. <laughs> okay. So, an idiot. I understand is a cruel word. Uh, you talked to Jonathan. Yeah. I've never met Jonathan. I've never talked to Jonathan. Um, I only know that Jonathan exists because he brought a house to a lady that brought me in to finance it in Dilly. And I had several people chastise me for lending $100,000 on a house in Dilly, Texas. Jonathan found the deal. But it was 1990 construction, four-sided brick house on a half an acre lot, less than a quarter of a mile from all of the schools that somebody had built, probably custom built, and they had lived there, you know, they moved in off the ranch or whatever, and they had yeah. lived there, and the husband died, and now the lady needed to go to assisted living, and she drove herself into a ditch and didn't know how to sell it. And they ended up selling it too cheap because they wouldn't put the full investment in it that it required to make it bring a little bit more. And then, oh, let's see, 
they we had the worst freeze ever in the state of Texas of which they went out of electricity of which they didn't have the water turned off of which then water pipes broke of which then uh, they got to rehab some of the house or all of the house in a cheap manner no matter what but they try to do nothing to that house clean it up so I lent them purchase price of $100,000. They ended up selling it for one sixty-five. Good for them. Yeah, but when it was all said and done, they thought they was going to make $30,000 plus each, of wow. which after the rehab, yeah, after the water bad. break, after this, maybe, they made $15,000 each. Yeah. But anyhow. Yeah. Um, but... So that deal in Divine, I got a little more detail this week of it is, is this the ladies, of course she's older, she's wanting to move, she needs to move to Florida to be close right. to family. I met her, yeah. Okay. She owes $25,000 on that piece of shit. So, you know, somebody walked in and of which, you know, she, and, and as it turns out, it has never, the lot has never been up totally appropriately platted, blah, 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 blah. So it wouldn't pass muster. And so somebody walks in and tells her that they will give her $35,000. I think that was his contract, right? Yeah. Give her $35,000. She says, oh, gee, I can walk out of this deal with $10,000 and move to Florida. Hoo hoo, go, go to it, Jonathan. Right. But you know, and so they're still dinking around thinking that they can buy this deal and that it's a deal. I told the lady that told me about the deal that I lent the money to on the Dilly house. I said, you guys just will walk away from this. And if you really want to give the lady any advice, tell her that her, she doesn't have any credit. And if she screws up her credit now, it doesn't really make any difference. Quit making the goddamn payments. Keep whatever payment money that she's got over three, five, whatever months move to Florida and let somebody have it back. I mean, had she started down the path of it is, is not paying property taxes and not paying the payment on that thing, you know, a year ago, she'd have her $10,000. When they come to evict her, okay, take it. Take it. I don't care. I mean, you know, it, it sounds terrible, but people like that. Yeah, they're leaving landlord. early. Yeah, and uh, he asked me to just lock it on the way out. Yeah. You should have lock it. So um, we can stay here as long as we want. Yeah. Well, um, but 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 anyhow, I mean, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of like the the best. But, but all worst. the com well, all the comps that they were showing me of it is, is they was going outside of town, comparing it to recent double wide sales, mm -hmm. you know, that were much nicer on at least five acres of dirt. <laughs> what part of that is con comparable? Yeah, no. I, 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 at 35, I think it makes sense. Uh, I would take it at 35 because it is a double wide and it's rehab, yes, but I, I, I think I can still make a note out of that. Somewhere oh, you, you, Andrew, that's the type of deal that if you have some money of your own that you want to put to work and you want to manage the element, yes, you can sell it for 70 you know, and you might end up getting five, ten thousand $10,000 down and selling it for 70 five different times. But, but that one, it sounds like of it is, is you could probably never get title insurance on it. But anyhow, it, it, it is what it is. But, you know, uh, there's, there's a lot of people running around trying to do these deals, and it's been easy. Hell, my, in reality of it is, I guess my lending has been easy for the 10 years that I've lent money. One of these days, that's going to come to a screeching ass halt. Now, when you say easy, you mean your guidelines or the deals that have come through that well, you funded? Well, the, there's been deals, and even if somebody made a mistake and gave a little bit too much, the markets bailed them out. Yeah. What happens when the market quits bailing idiots out? I, I agreed to lend money sight unseen on a house. It would be my fourth deal with, with a gentleman. Earlier this week, I drove by it today, a house in Los Angeles Heights. I'm letting him purchase $135,000 and, you know, not too long ago, wouldn't have lent $40,000 on the house. 
But you know, the guy's performed on everything that he's done with me. You know, I think he'll probably, if, if, if he gets in sideways, he'll bite the bullet and absorb it himself. But I'm going to lend him purchase. He has to bring all the rehab. So at some point, I can probably get out if he gets rehabbed, so whether he makes any money. But I mean, everybody, think, everybody thinks that any 1,400 square foot house in San Antonio, in any bring of these, will bring 200,000 plus. Yeah. And, and the question of it is, is how many of them think it's going to bring 275 to 350? Yeah, and, and, and you know, the problem is that it works. Many times it's happening. I mean, now I see, I'm, I'm, I'm going down to Harlandale and seeing these three, two, 1,400 square foot homes bringing in 160, 170 when, back when I bought Contra, I wouldn't pay 50, 60 for those. It's insane. And I think that's what's happening, that they, they think this is the new standard. And I, I don't know about that new standard. I think it's just inflated as heck and it's kind of... Well, the, the, minute, the minute that interest rates, that mortgage rates go from 3% to 4 and a half, 4, 4 and a half, 5%, you will see so much money come off this market, it will just absolutely scare you to, de to death. I mean, yeah, well, wages are getting better. I'm not real sure wages are going to get that much better. And, and here's the other piece about wages getting better, is it wages getting better for everybody doesn't do anything but increase inflation because all price points will reset accordingly. Mm -hmm. Wage increases are only beneficial when? When I get them and you don't. Because I've improved my lot in life. I've moved up a step. But this, this idea that, and, and I know this sounds terrible, but this idea that all the feel-good people says, well, we got to pay everybody more. Okay, so you pay everybody more. Hell, I can't even go get Big Macs nowadays and get for and and, and get out of uh, McDonald's for less than eighteen bucks. You, you you probably enjoy this guy from the sixties, seventies, eighties. Uh, something Freeman. He was an economist. Ball headed guy. Something Freeman. Yeah. Um, but anyways, he was all about free trade, capitalism, and basically... Well, you know, free trade was a great concept, but who did free trade... But what did free trade do? Well, according to him, it, it, it allows us, the, the, the market, to set the prices uh, without well, what, government intervention. Okay, he, here's what free trade did, and is, is we exported all of our jobs to China. Free trade by not having tariffs or anything to hold somebody that was willing to produce it for less, holding the price point up, we allowed that to come in. That was great consumerism. All the poor people, all the less fortunate people, all the people that were working for an hourly wage, they was able to get refrigerators and washers and this and that and cars and whatever. And, and so they was able to get that cheap product coming in because we exported all of our jobs to somebody else that was willing to do those jobs for less. The problem of it is, is we've now exported all of those jobs and many of those jobs when they were in the U.S. were better paying jobs. And so we exported the better paying jobs, which now then those people had to say of it is, well, now what am I going to do? Well, they didn't all go become uh, owners of Facebook and make billions. They actually moved, over time, their wages moved down the economic scale. You, you can, any, the, the only thing that, that the wages have started to get better on are the things that have to be done here. Requires face-to-face -face contact. Right. Yeah, you can't outsource that. Yeah, and even you know, plumbers, this... electricians, you know, those those types of trades, those people, they're not, they're not Zuckerberg and making that kind of money. But they, you know, if they're good at it, and they hire a couple guys to do the backbreaking manual labor, you know, and they make thirty percent off of every one of them, they've continued to do well. And that's really what you're trying to do when you say scale or find people knocking on the doors. What's the problem with 
you still have to go negotiate the deal. Yes. Because there is no way that you can delegate that negotiation and get the deal bought and bought right. And, and, and that somebody will walk that house with the level of detail that it takes. A, what will it cost me? What can I sell this for? Right. You know, apparently you've, you've, there's a realtor or two out there that you're using to sell these, these mobile home things that, you know, but they're interested in one thing. They're interested in you paying them a commission for them to generate, for them to sell it. Yeah, yeah that's what they care about, their, their commission, yeah. And, and you're willing to carry the paper and deal with the headaches. Mm -hmm. So how many notes properties do you hold? Right now, 40, 41. Living a pretty good lifestyle. Yeah. So you're gonna to have to realize of it is, is that you're, as much of your business is going to be of it is, is, is maintaining control of those and making sure that they continue to perform and, and, and making sure that, uh, you realize the ultimate sale price on those properties that you sold them for. Yeah, I actually, you know, what happened with my skeet that I took it back. Oh, did you get it back finally? Yes, and I, I got another one back today. That's why I have to cancel on you at two because we have that appointment at two with Barry. Um, in Arascosa, IH35. I actually bought this note from Robert. Robert made the deal. And he needed so this is one of the notes you bought from Robert this year? No, this was last year. Okay. Not Wait, last year was 20, no. The year before that, it was towards the end of 2019 was when I bought it. And so was this a subject to deal? Yeah, he did the subject to. He, you know, it was his note. And then he needed some money and uh, I said, well, let me look at that note. Uh, and he was bringing in uh, 400 and almost $500, right? And uh, Net to you. Well, to him, he was he was getting almost five hundred bucks. Net to him. Yeah, net to him. After, yeah, after his PITI and their PITI, it was it was uh, almost five hundred, and uh, so we negotiated and and uh, I gave him fifteen. Yeah, fifteen for it, and uh, took over and yeah, I was like, oh, yeah, I don't mind that. Um, so and yeah, these people got five hundred a month. So you had a break even of about three years of payments. Uh, at, yes. Break him in about three years in. Mm -hmm. And now this happened. Um, so well, I'm, I'm just saying, 512 is a 60, isn't it? Right. <laughs> yeah. So, Six one, three, two. Three, yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, so that's that's what happened with that one. That's the thing I, I took it back today. And the draw ending, I took back Barrel Point and Mesquite. So I've taken back three houses so far. Um, Barrel Point? Of course, that was your primary residence. That was my primary that I wrapped, yeah. Um, and then I took it back. <laughs> the lady, I don't know, she, she sold her house in Converse. And uh, this was an Airbnb. And you, you had been Airbnb in Barrel Point. Right, I was Airbnb in Barrel Point. It was doing well, but I didn't, I was good getting thing, a, Good thing you weren't Airbnb anything during the pan pandemic. Right, right, no. Uh, Anyhow, this, go ahead. This was prior to the pandemic. I, I was just, I, I didn't, I, I, I did. Four Airbnb totals, and I didn't like that model because it was too active. I didn't. I don't. I'm, I'm a little lazy, I guess. I think there were two times that the cleaning lady called almost last minute, so my wife and I were there cleaning, wiping, you know, getting it ready for the guests to come. I was like, this sucks. I don't want to do this. You know? Well, all of these things of it is is get yes, all of these things though get down to. I'm guessing many of your Airbnb bookings were not back to back. Uh, not that location. That location had a little, it was just a two to three day window, but. Because uh, you, you booked them Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Right, yeah. You remember the uh, townhome? Yeah. You remember you didn't want to fund that townhome? That one was a back to back. That little townhome brought in so much money uh, when we sold it uh, as well when, uh, when COVID happened. When that one, okay, so that one was a, a, a seller carry, right? The lady um, agreed to. Uh, take back paper for five years so when you bought it when we bought it when we bought it um, uh, and um, so that's a great model whenever it works yeah whenever it works and I have another one 
I think I've done three or four of those deals, and I, my, my initial, um, I try to negotiate five, 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 five. You know, 5% down, 5% interest, five-year balloon. And when I get pushback, then I got three. Uh, you got three variables to negotiate. Three variables to negotiate, and that, that usually works out pretty well. And usually the first, the first one to negotiate is the purchase price. Oh, this sounds great, I, I would like to do it, but I, I can't do 5%. Can you do 10%? I can, but not at that purchase price or that interest rate, and so on. So, so it's I love it when we start negotiating this type because uh, they're considering it. Um, so that was one of those deals. The lady behind HOA, so we brought the HOA current. Um, we didn't give her any money. We just brought all the HOA current. The HOA was one to foreclose, and she agreed to take back paper. We, and we gave her a fair price at that time. Uh, we paid sixty nine, I think. At that time, the thing was only worth like a hundred. It needed work, so we rehabbed the Airbnb. And so when we came time to pay off, instead of we knew we were gonna pay it off, so I called her and I said, I didn't say. Give Did me she a have pay. underlying paper? No, she didn't have underlying. Okay, paper. so she owned it free and clear, and it. then got behind on her HOA. Dish. No, no, no. Prior to owning it, so so yeah, she owned it free and clear and got behind on the HOA. Yes, um, okay. and she blamed on the husband, whatever. Uh, so. Got our foreclosure, paid the HOA. She agreed to carry back paper. Uh, so when we called, well, I called, and I said, you know what? Let me try this because I could have just said, give me a payoff, right? And I said, you know, we we come, we did a rehab, which we had. I don't, I don't like we, we had done a rehab. I said, I have a little bit of money. I can pay you off now, or we can continue. And she said, oh well, I don't have a need for the money. Okay, well, if if you wanted to, I could pay you off, you know. Today, if you wanted to just, you know. Was you gonna pay her off at a discount? What, well, I just planted the seed. And, and then she said, well, how much would you pay me? And that's what led me to asking for a discount because, well, do I have a choice? I said, what do you mean how much you will pay? Whatever the payoff is, right? And so in my mind, you know, I'm thinking real quick as she's talking. I said, well, so I, the payoff, it was somewhere in the 60s. I said, well, if you, do you take money today, I, I can pay you 50. Or we can just keep going, we can keep waiting. I said. Oh no! Just let's just keep going, you know. So then, uh, okay, fine. We, we were. It was it, about a week after I put it on the market. It was under contract. Well, she didn't just. I don't know where she's at. Washington. She couldn't. She could have looked on MLS and see if it was active, but she didn't do that. So, so I guess we got lucky. She calls back and says, "Hey, uh, um, about that payoff, you know, can you do fifty-five? I say sure, <laughs> but it was perfect timing because we we got to pay her off anyway. That's, that's training that multiple people that teach buying property with owner financing. That that's what you always do is and and I mean Eddie Speed's preaching the thing now of it is 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 that well give them what they want, but give it to them interest for but but don't pay any interest on it. So, yeah. so they have this mental thing, and then ultimately they will get themselves in a situation that they want the money, and then you renegotiate the purchase price or the payoff price. There's people teaching that up and down the street every day. I personally have moral issues with that. Right, because you There's also other issues. Would you rather pay a higher interest rate and a lower price? Or would you rather pay a zero interest rate at a high price? Higher interest rate, the, the risk factor. You can exit the deal quicker if you need to. Because well, you have, but, you have, but, but, you, you have but, equity. But the other thing of it is, is, is so, okay. And most real estate investors, you know, it's a sin to pay any income tax. But so you give $100,000 for it, but, and you're getting $1,000 a month. But you're not paying any interest. You pay interest on, or you pay income tax on how much? A thousand dollars a month. Right. Whereas if you give fifty thousand dollars for it, and say I'll pay you X interest, you know you're getting the same thing. When you don't pay any interest and you gave a higher purchase price of it, is you're taking away the deductibility of an expense that the law allows. That the law allows. And you're and you're turning it into a capital investment. Would you rather have the income tax deduction today, or would you rather pay the, you know, pay the money out? Yeah, but the the higher purchase price with no interest sounds sexier. That sounds better in, in some well, <laughs> 
because the purchase or the seller gets all excited about oh well I I'm, I'm getting my price yeah. I'm getting my price and I don't have to pay any income tax that's a good deal the problem of it is 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 that I'll say and and Sam Madrid's fallen into this trap well, they don't pay this. Yeah, say, would you rather pay her interest, make her pay some income tax at a 15% marginal rate, and get to deduct it on your tax return at a 35% marginal rate, or not get any deduction and push all that as a capital asset to someday, maybe if could be when you sell it, that you have a higher basis? Right, you're playing the appreciation game. So, I mean, you know, none of this makes any sense, but I don't want to sit here and take a lot of your time. Um, no, you're fine. I, I don't, I don't, I mean, and for sure on Elm, you putting that thing out 150 some months. Any, any time that I've heard of partials and the only interest that I would have in partials is, and, and maybe even in anything, but probably a five year window. Also 60 payments. That would be the max, you know, but you know, and I have never done one, but typically my understanding of it is, is is when it is a partial. The examples that you sent over, you were reducing the payment somehow. Typically, it's well, my you, understanding. That, that was your idea. Well, if you're going to reduce the payment, and, and maybe I said that, but if you're going to reduce the payment, then it would appear to me like that it's more that you would do a a collateral assignment of note and deed and you know pay the payment through it's my understanding on the partial of it is is, is that you're walking away from everything and the note servicing company just sends the money right. rather than having to do a split or yeah. whatever the only and reason I did that is because you mentioned that you would want me to still be involved versus completely give up yeah and under that and, and, and it's really the same thing mm -hmm. only it's probably termed differently we would do a, 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 a an assignment or a trans a collateral transfer of, of note and deed of trust. I've done some of those with uh, collateral transfer of note and deed of trust. Or in other states, it would be called an assignment. Okay. And and a temporary assignment for whatever, and then you write a new note of what, and so that is collateral. Mm -hmm. For a new note that we write between us, on oh, that's why it's an assignment. That's why it's an assignment. Is is that, that, that you're giving up or you're encumbering your paper and giving it to me through this note through through a new note, and that is my that is my security for the new note. Got it. Okay. Yeah. That that, that makes. I sense. mean, and I have done collateral assignments. Are I those, did. Are those I, cleaner? They sound cleaner. Well, okay. And so I had a person in town come to me and they wanted to sell me. Uh, they had all kinds of owner finance notes and they wanted to sell me. And, and they self, and this wasn't Sam, and they self, um, uh, they, they don't use a note servicing. They, they're their own note servicer. And they had generated all these. And I said, you know, I don't want this. Those people are going to test me. And so I had them. I said, so I will take them, but I'll only give you 80%. You keep the other 80 per, You keep the 20% 20. 20 is basically your skin in the game. You deal with the headaches. if they You deal with the headaches, yeah. whatever the case may be, because what, what were the people really wanting? They were wanting the cash to go on and do other deals. And so I, I, I did a deal of, I don't know, I, I don't know how many houses I drove by in that deal. I must have drove by 20 different houses. And it was a package deal. They said, here, go choose what you want. What are you comfortable with? Oh, there was some real shit in them. Oh, so you, you, did you at least pick the... Did you I, I picked up 10. Okay. I took 10, took 80%. I don't know. What was it? I lent him $150,000 or something like that. On those 10, oh, they were, they were small deals then. Oh, yeah, they were all deals that they generated in 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay. But those are good, good risk. I mean, by now they've appreciated. You, get, you got the uh, payment well, and some of them have paid off. I mean, 
and and many of them had had shorter payoffs. The worst of them of it is there's one of them that 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 was thirty year paper. See, I'm trying to stay away from owning owner finance notes, the thirty year paper. Okay, why is that? I'll be sixty six next month. Do I want to go out and and saddle my wife with investments of thirty year paper? Because I know if she, after I'm gone and I'm not here to fight with people like you, you are going to rape, plunder, and pillage. <laughs> rape, plunder, and pillage. <laughs> but I mean, and, yeah. and so, you know, I know that she's going to take this discount. So I, I went and made an investment. I bought that paper thinking that I was getting an X rate of return. And all of that additional return will probably be given up on the back end when she when somebody has to sell those notes. And so I'm not looking to put very many of that type of stuff in my portfolio and or I do it with someone that there is a put type of relationship. You know, on my death it can be put back to you at we'll say you. It can be put back to you. You will buy it back at X, or you will continue to service it and make sure that it doesn't decline in value more than Y or something the other. I mean, I haven't worked through all the details of that, but yeah. I had somebody wanting me to do more, you know, buy in with them on owner finance notes. And I said, I, I don't want any 30 year paper. I mean, I'm 65, that'll make me 95. The reality of it is, is I'm not going to be around at 95. You know, my wife might be around yet 30 years from now. Her family has a pretty good history of living into their 90s. But do I want to saddle her with that? And on these, on these notes with these high interest rates, the principal balances will still be fairly significant 20 years in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, the first five years is all interest. Yeah, the principal balance is not First 10 really years. Good. It doesn't start tip. Doesn't, you don't start paying anything down, and it, you know, it, it, at the rates that you're talking about on the owner finance notes, the last five years is really the pay down. Crazy, right? It's well, like, that's the way the amortization schedule works. Yeah, it's like an inverse. Yeah, it's death. Yeah, that's the way the amortization works. Yeah. So anyhow, yeah. so I mean, and and then the complicating factor of it is 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 on the Elm deal of it is is. You're you're not a hundred percent in that, and you know, thinking about that a little bit more, you know, I don't know what your relationship was with that guy, how it still is. I know you Ander enough of it is, is you're still friends with everybody. You don't get vindictive like me, but uh, uh, you know, but you know, what is it about you? That's the second or third partner you've been through since I've been working with you. Me? Yeah. So I I, I know what it is, but. <laughs> Everybody, you go into it, and oh, we can all make lots of money together, and people get disenfranchised, and or they are too aggressive for you, and or the reality is sets in that this isn't as easy as they think. I mean, you well, know, well, your buddy Richard, I don't know where your buddy Richard's at. I haven't looked up on him in, in quite some time, but, yeah, you know, he's rode the wave, but I'm not real sure. Well, let me say it this way. He's rode the wave, and he thinks that he's very, very smart. And nobody is very, very smart when they don't pay their property tax. Or you have to borrow to pay property tax. That doesn't make any sense. To when me. you don't pay your property tax, yeah. borrowing to pay your property tax is not paying your property tax. And when you have tons of property, that, that doesn't make, you're right, that doesn't make any sense. To because me. because there, the reality of it is, is there's no deed of trust out there that you don't invalidate the deed of trust when you don't pay the property tax. Anybody that got that type that didn't get that in their deed of trust, they were an, idiot, an absolute idiot. Rule number one, if you're going to lend money on real estate, and I'm guessing probably any state, you, you have to require the property taxes be paid because those people can get in front of you. If you want first position, so when Richard didn't pay them, I mean, it, hell, that got him sideways with Jefferson Bank. And he was trying to refinance properties in Jefferson Bank for a while, I'm told, told him no. Yeah, I think he went and got a private lender or something. 
Yeah, I don't know. Well, I, well, no, he got a property tax lender for the property taxes. Oh, is that what he did? I don't know. I mean, he's he's got so many assets. That's that that just do just liquidate one, take care of your debt, but. Wow, it's his deal. At that time, I think he had like 80 doors at that time. But now he's probably over 100. Um, well, he was swinging big because he's smart. Yeah, I mean, he's... I made a little money off of him, and then I'm glad that I'm not with him any longer. <laughs> you know, yeah. but anyhow. So, but I mean, not to drag this on, but, you know, if, if we want to rediscuss something, but I wouldn't do it more than five-year paper, and I'm probably... I mean, on that double wide of it is, is that I'm not really interested in, in the park at, at 10% rate of return. Again, because it's you, we might work something out, but it might be that it's just as easy to do a collateral assignment where you're still in the middle. Right. And yeah, I have no problems uh, being in the middle. I, I just want to get more. And I'm okay. I don't need the cash. I want it. I want to get cash heavy because I want to take advantage of this opportunity when it hits. Um, well, yeah, you know, Andrew, you you will. I'm going to say you will have spent the cash. Not that you spent the cash frivolously, but you will have yeah. any cash that you get. You will get it reinvested because there'll always be a deal that you will look at and say, "Oh, well, I'm not paying that damn green on this particular deal, <laughs> 10, 12 percent." So you know. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's got to be a good deal for me to get involved now. Um, if another black cherry comes around, yeah, I'll do that. You know, um, but they're not coming around very often now. Well, you know, I don't know. I mean, you know, and and there's stuff going in at, at different places, but uh, I mean, there was there was a lot for sale, two lots down from Black Cherry. Yeah, they wanted fifty. 50 something let's say they wanted 50 and well that, that wasn't realistic no but even even at 50 he had i think he had no utilities i think it was just a lot i it looked to me like it had never been improved yes yeah forget that that's not a, mm -mm. i had a in, in today's market 25 maybe unimproved yes maybe yeah but you know i like 25 where there's or where, where the electric's already there and the septic's in yeah yeah me too i just can't i had a whole set of bring me one it was uh, 55, improved, uh, beat up mobile home. Ugh, like 55, and you still have to put another, maybe. Well, you know, wholesalers will bring them all day because yeah. they don't know value. They don't know what it takes. They're only looking at making some spread, some margin. Yeah, and I just. I you know, and the first thing that you got to tell them of it is, is, is that I will give this for it. And I will give you a five hundred thousand dollar finder fee if you want to sell it for that. If you if you've got it bought and you can sell it for that and you want out, you know I will give this and I'll give an additional thousand dollar finder's fee. Other than that, dude, go pound sand. <laughs> because you know there's way too many people running around being wholesalers, and you know those are the people that for sure have pushed this market. They don't know what value is or what it takes, but because there's been some stupid idiot down the street that will give it because they, you know, saw flip this house and they're going to do this. This lady that I did the deal with in, in Dilly, she, well, she brought the deal in uh, uh, Divine, and then, you know, I passed on that, and then she brought me a deal... Uh, she was going to give a hundred and a half for a house on a quarter acre lot, halfway between New Braunfels and Seguin. Okay. And so you're going down 46, and there's new house, new house, new house, all new developments going in. And you go down and you turn down this road, and somebody had sold three or four lots off in the front of their farm field, and somebody had built this house, and some wholesaler went in there and gave a hundred and a half for this house. And told her it would bring two fifty. I'm not real sure the house would bring a hundred and a half fixed up. <laughs> well, your competition's brand new, right? You know, and 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 there's no drawing card of oh, I'm in Dingwitty for somebody to give a stupid price for a you know fixed up 1920s construction. 
So I passed. She went ahead and did it. I asked her the other day, well, yeah, I got some friends that I'm, that I'm doing it with. Well, they won't, may not be your friends long. But what that brings me to of it is I'm doing a mobile home with her setting. It has some lake, some view of Canyon Lake. And she's in a bad deal and it's going to go, it's going sideways for her. But she, I don't think she realizes, and most people don't realize do you know why mobile homes continue to work for people like you? Because there's high demand, uh, especially on... The... No, they're owner finance properties because they nobody can get traditional financing. Because so many of these deals, somebody had a lot or bought a lot or did something. And there was a mobile home brought in but it was never had an appropriate foundation put under it when it was new yeah, like the and, and tied down when it was new Therefore, it will never, ever qualify for traditional financing. Therefore, it is always a Yoander deal. It's an owner finance deal. Or at some point, it's going to be. Because, you know, however those people got into it, when they want out, they can't sell it to anybody. The only people that they can sell it to is you. And I'm guessing most of these wholesalers don't know that that's the case. No. But, but it's my understanding, and if you're not aware of this, you maybe need to do some more research yourself. But in order to qualify, it has to have been put on a foundation, an approved FHA foundation, and an approved FHA tie-down in its initial setting when it was brand new. Right. Or it will never qualify for traditional right. finance. It cannot have moved, been moved more than once. Well, it's not only moved. Tied down property. It, it had to be attached to the real estate and put on the foundation day one. There may have been different rules earlier, but I'm pretty sure that's the rule today. Yeah, no, that's the rule today. That's what I went through with uh, uh, Elm. Yeah. Um, and that's, yeah, otherwise, I don't think that you can get title insurance on it. Well, there's a difference between title insurance and going and getting FHA financing. You see, FHA won't even finance it. If it's not on an approved FHA foundation tied down, FHA won't, won't loan on it at all. And the only way anyhow today that that can be done is in the narrow window when it is brand spanking new. Now, somebody may go in and say, I've now upgraded the foundation that it is FHA approved standard that it is tied down FHA approved tie down but I don't think FHA will still lend on it it had to be done when it was brand spanking new it had to meet that qualifying criteria under the first owner when the owner did it mm -hmm. so anyhow but that would be something to research because this deal that I'm in on it over at Canyon Lake, the lady got tied up with another lady and the lady, the, the lady she got tied up with couldn't get the financing, but she wanted to make this her personal residence and she thought that she could get a reverse mortgage, but she couldn't get the reverse mortgage. And so they were going to come to me and blah, 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 blah. And I said, no, nah, I won't lend her after I found out who it was because I'd met her at a, a, at a RIA or two. And then, they, then they basically tried to sham Ricky. They supposedly entered into a joint venture where the lady was going to, and, and under the joint venture, they was going to sell it and split the profits 50-50. Well, the joint venture agreement never got signed. I lent on the money, but I lent on it to, to the one lady and to her entity and she signed the personal guarantee and my deal is with her she did the joint venture deal on the sign never got it signed and then the lady is still under 70 some years old doesn't have a pot to piss in she dresses well has jewelry blah 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 you know she talks a pretty good game but she thought she was would still be able to get a reverse mortgage do you think that you can go get a reverse mortgage on a, actually this one they call a triple because it's a double wide that then had another piece set out from it on, on a T type of basis. 
but thought that you know she would be able to get a reverse mortgage for this thing and get it appraised for three hundred and some thousand dollars and get a reverse mortgage for two hundred and some thousand dollars. Number one of it is I don't think that it, it no matter what they do they could probably ever get it approved because it is a manufactured home for a reverse mortgage. But reverse mortgages really aren't designed for people to buy a residence. Right. No, it's they're... it's it's a salvation thing for them to stay in their house. You know, late in life. So, you know, they got a 30-year mortgage, blah 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 blah. They think they've got all this equity. They maybe do have some equity, but they still have some mortgage there, but they want to get rid of that monthly cash drain. So they go get a reverse mortgage of which then they get rid of the monthly payment drain because somebody has said, okay, you don't have to pay us as long as you live here. But you, but I think they only write those things at 50, 55% of appraised value. And they're very, very expensive as far as cost to get in them. So anyhow, um, again, not to take a lot of your time here, so, okay. um, I mean, I don't have interest in those two deals the way you wrote them up. I don't know that how much interest you have. If you're not needing money, this may be a concept, Yoander, that you need to do some studying of and realizing that if you have paper like that where there is no underlying mortgage, you might be able to raise cash at some point, you know, to, to do something. You do whatever you want, but I... You know, and, and I would try to do something on a trial learning type of basis, but you know, I'm not real sure either one of those are good projects for a a partial. You know, I maybe got over excited when I was explaining it to you, or whatever the case may be. Um, and again, you know, if if I, I guess I'll say this: if if you want to somehow try to that we try to work through it, of which on the two properties you get an advance of something like $50,000 on the two properties combined and I'm getting a rate of return something like 12% and we back into how many payments that's going to be and that's our broad parameters we can continue to talk about it and, and, and whatever okay. but I'm not real sure that your partner buddy is going to be too excited about that only getting that out of um, that limited amount out of Elm. I don't know how much you're into Elm, but I think you're in at thirty, forty thousand. Um, all, all together, well, we bought it for seventy. You yeah. bought Elm for seventy? Yeah. You didn't buy Elm for seventy. Yeah, we bought Elm for seventy. Oh my God. Yeah. Pecan was that we were bought Pecan for like twenty something. Uh, yeah, Pecan. Uh, yeah, I lend on it. We yeah. bought that for. Well, we bought that for twenty five. Twenty five. Yeah. Or you bought that for twenty five. That's yeah. what I lent, and then. There was twenty for rehab. Yeah. It was going to be a forty-five thousand oh, dollars deal. Uh, talking about Pecan, what's your experience on? So there was a twenty-five hundred dollar holdback because the guy wouldn't move out, right? So we held back twenty-five hundred at, at, at funding. I told Anita, I need a hold at closing. You I, held back twenty-five hundred dollars for something. We, we basically a carrot so he to assure he would move out. Okay. Uh, so he took about two weeks to move out, and. Um, besides the moving out, what was, I mean, we, we're going to trash the place anyways. Um, but I was going to charge him for, for not moving out on time because I mean, I'm now I'm paying holding costs. It was only fair that he would cover that whole, it wasn't a whole lot, but, um, I, I think it was, I, I don't know what your question is, but your question sounds like it's going to be of it is, is do you have an obligation to pay him blah, 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 and all that's. That's going to come down to if it is, 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 well, first, legally, what does the document say and what can you prove that he did or didn't do or what are the trigger points that allows him to get his $2,500? So it was, it was, we didn't, we didn't put anything in writing was the problem. I was, it was a verbal agreement. I told him, hey, we're going to hold back $2,500. And I don't know if Nina made him sign anything along the lines of. Well, you, you you need to go back and see what is signed and and what the agree what the written agreement is. 
Well, the point is that she released it without. Oh, my, she released it. She released the twenty five without my approval. How did she know to release it? Exactly. I didn't. No. No one. Yeah. I mean that that would be the question, and and, and you know, and, need is. I don't want to say he's one of the better ones, but I've had less trouble with her, so to speak, than than many. I mean, our, our friend Jessica, whatever. I mean, you yeah. know, uh, Nita's always communicated reasonably well with me. But if she released it, you know, the question of it is, is, is well, it turned out to be. It, what are what are you going to gain by fighting it, other than no, I'm not than saying. holding. Nita uh, having a conversation of Nita, why almost of it is help me out here because I would have thought you needed my approval. Yeah, and, and agreement. She, and that, and, and uh, well, Roy, her boss, agreed that she shouldn't have released okay. it without my approval. I said, well, what's done is done, Roy. What can we do? And, and basically, what I negotiated was, well, every time you close here, you know, we will charge you if you when you're paying closing costs, we'll charge you five hundred dollars. Okay, let's do that. So <laughs> yeah, and, and so yeah, I mean, to me, of it is, is you know, I don't want to say she got a reprimand, but you know, they sat down and had a discussion of why did you release that? That's not according to their procedures. Right. You've put us at risk, whatever. But yeah, I mean, it sounds to me like that you've accomplished everything that be accomplished in the deal. So I whatever. So now, so that's the reason I keep closing with them. If nobody else charging me five hundred, um, they 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 gone up. It used to be the case. Excel was charging five hundred. For both sides, you know, when, when you pay all the closing. Uh, and Alamo at one point was charging 500 and then now they all want to charge more than that. Well, 750 there's plenty of business. Yeah. And your deals aren't simple. No, and that's what, that's what Roy said. Plus, you wonder, your deals are not simple. They're, they have a lot of hair in them. <laughs> yes. Yes. Say, so I know. But I don't, yeah, you know, it's just. I mean, to some degree of it is, is finding a title company that will even close some of your Right. Yeah. So some of these companies want to stay away from. They they only want the clean deals, realtor deals. You know, it's normal deals and higher price points where they actually make money. <laughs> My deals are smaller price points. Yeah. I mean, so we started this conversation about with you of you know how do you scale or how do you this or how do you that. What there's always going to be probate deals, and you figuring out how to track the people down and getting all the heirs to sign. Well, for, let's back up a minute. Uh, what's that? The way I used to know how to find probate deals was by going down to the courthouse and asking for the physical folders. And in the folders, you would see everything. You would see who the uh, um, uh, the the people involved were. What's that name I'm looking for for the the person in charge of the the, the, the administrator or the executor. administrator or executor you will see all that under all the information was on there and I would just copy it in my little notepad because you can they'll allow you to take pictures that's fine so I would just sit there and copy okay that's it. and then I would come and skip tracing and get a hold of them and try but now they won't share the folders anymore because of COVID they send you to um, okay so I can tell you one way of doing it what huh Go to Mr. Mark Ortega. Mm -hmm. You know Mark. Yeah, I know Mark. Yeah, the land deal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the 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 Pine Eagle deal. Yeah, uh, he is downloading a lot of stuff from multiple counties, and see if you can buy the probate list from him. You know, and and maybe even buy the list from him after, um, uh, maybe even after he's mailed to it. Yeah, I mean, because some of these deals of it is is being there in front of them at the right time. Yeah, I mean, about time. to me of it is is some of this gets down to of it is is rather than you say. So when you say knocking on doors, pre foreclosure doors, pre foreclosure doors. Okay, going back to what you was doing at uh, what was the name um, something capital, mentor capital, mentor capital. Um, You know, and you can still get those lists. Uh, the preferred grocery list? Yeah, it's public data. I can show you. Right well, now. that's fine. Yeah. Uh, you know, so. So that list I know how to get. Um, the only list that. The, well, the, the some of this is going to be of it is, is figuring out which ones to 
knock on that have the highest probability of closing. So in other words, the, the classic, you know, and this is easy to say, work smarter, not harder. Right. And yeah. And, and that's why we typically go on, go to um, pre foreclosures only because they have they have the highest motivation. Uh, but the thing that probably excites you about a pre foreclosure of it is, is is finding one that has no equity. Well, no. Well, that has maybe some equity, but you can still get it subject to. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, and you know, again, some of these things of it is 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 that everybody has gotten down to of it is 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 that they think that you that this is all about volume. Volume. And volume. How many deals? You know, there. You know, there's a lot of people that that got into the um, into the wholesaling game and was doing all this and was you know doing all this mailings. And, you know, again, through the upswing from 10, you know, it was very, very good. You know, there was there were people that never wholesaled a house that built wholesaling businesses that was doing two, three hundred houses a year because they was doing this. But this is at some point we're going to migrate back to it is, is those people are going by the wayside. You know, they built up these things, whatever. And you're you're going to have to realize that it's. It's not how many deals I'm doing, it's doing the right deals and then managing those deals through the life of the transaction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's what, no ter that, that's what servicing companies really help. I, I, I finally found a good one, Mills. But then again, I communicate with them quite often, but Mills, Mills Note Servicing, they're out of El Paso. Uh, I thought the local ones here would be good. Including moat, moat sucks. Moat's expensive, and they suck. I mean, it's a, if you're gonna be expensive, fine, you provide good service, but they. Yeah. Well, they don't have to. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, forty-five bucks a file, and they don't provide good service. I mean, well, um, I'm. You know. The question's going to be is 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 when. Do you build the expertise and or hire the expertise that you bring, basically bring, that, bring it in house? Note servicing is an accounting bookkeeping function. Yes. Now I'm pretty sure that your accounting bookkeeping function for your own business sucks. Yes. But the question becomes of when do you find somebody that's good at that, but by servicing your own notes, you've, you're basically paying them and they're also doing your own bookkeeping and accounting and all of that administrative task. You see, you're trying to hire, in my opinion, you're trying to hire the wrong person. You're trying to hire the person to go do what you do, what you're good at. You need to hire the people to do what you're not good at, what you don't like doing, and then figuring out how you get that paid for through the note servicing or something else so that they're doing the note servicing but the note servicing fee pays for them to also do your accounting bookkeeping yeah you're, you're right that's a good hire because yeah that's um yeah if I can throw that off my plate all the paperwork all the admin stuff you're right. That's a great, really good hire. But that is, to me, that's that's maintaining, which is great. You, you have to maintain. You have to keep order. But what about building? How do we get new business? But that's what you like doing. So you go out and do that. But I'm limited on with my resources. Well, Maybe you're, you're, you're you're wanting you have you have an activity problem. You have you have a goal setting problem. You, you've been to the seminar and you set the goal of how many houses you want to buy as opposed to setting the goal at, at a more reasonable, realistic level of I want to buy the houses that will do X. You're wanting to churn and burn too much. I don't know that you no, do well, anymore, but, I think, but, I think, but you have wholesaled houses in the past. I've wholesaled in the past, yeah. My question would be of it is, is why would you ever wholesale a house? Uh, so I'll give you an example. The last one, um, okay, 718 Longleaf. That was my first sub two um, in 2017, in January 2017, my first sub two. 
And the tenants left. Actually, they weren't even tenants. They were supposed to buy it. <laughs> they were supposed to buy it, but they gave me $3,500 down. And they were supposed to, the total down payment was seven. They were supposed to have given me an extra $3,500. And then when that money came in, we would finalize the paperwork. In the meantime, they were just tenants and we did a lease. Well, three years, well, three and a half years went by and they never came up with the money. And uh, May, uh, they usually pay around the 9th, the 10th of May. And uh, here's what the 15th and no payment. And so I call, text, call. Hey, these people aren't answering. Maybe something's wrong. Maybe they got COVID or something. And they don't live too far from my house. I drove by and goes, gone. They left. Wow. Okay. I guess they forgot. <laughs> they had 30. So um, I, I, because because I'm wanting to hire and train and, 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 and scale, I don't want to touch 718 Longleaf. Otherwise, yeah, that would be a good one. My, my balance is 38000 now. Um, that's my payoff, 38000 I don't know, four point four point two six or no, something like that. The interest rate is, is really good. My PITI is like six and change. Okay. Um, all, all those are great details. The balance is 38000 What's the house worth? Uh, rehab now is like 140. Uh, it's a three one. And well, but but you see, what and, and you wholesaled that house? Well, no, I, I I was very close to it. Um, highest offer I got was 90. I said, well, you know, I already own this thing, and the market's hot. Let me put it on MLS. So I put it on MLS for 99, and multiple offers. I, I accepted the one with them paying closing costs at 102, uh, but it just. I mean, well, why okay, would that's a different deal, but yeah. but yeah, why would have you? I mean, in this market, I don't know why you would have wholesaled it, no matter what. That would for sure have been a your first exit strategy. Should have been hotailing it, putting it on MLS, yeah. and 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 moving on. Yeah, uh, you know. I mean, I've got people of it is is that, that that are running around looking for houses, thinking that they can buy houses off the MLS, clean them up a little bit, and then hotel them, and or buy them from a wholesaler and turn around and put them on the MLS and and yeah. and, and hotel them. There's not that much left, you yeah. know. You you might be working for that commission. Well, yeah. Yeah. If it works, I mean, it's very high risk to do that. I mean. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and, and so you know. But to answer your question, the the, the, the reason I, I want to. But but yo, Ender, if you had something like that, with the underlying financing, okay. So it sounds like it needed a cosmetic rehab, which is going to be easier, and then turn around and and sell it owner financed. Yeah. With the cheap underlying money, I mean that's that's perfect. I mean you know that's what you do every day. Yeah. What? So why would why would you, with that cheap money already in place at such a low balance, why get rid of it? Why, why would you sell it? Because I want the money. I want to be cash heavy. I want to uh, be able to take advantage of uh, the opportunity. No, 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 no. That's not it. That's what you're telling yourself. I, I don't. I don't want to do the work. Um, but but you you're you're gonna have to do some work to any of them. Your problem of it is, is, is you're you're wanting the adrenaline rush of doing another deal. It has nothing to do with making the money. You're getting more adrenaline rush from going out and finding a new deal and working through all of the steps and negotiating all of the deal, as opposed to saying, "I am really focused on building long-term cash flow and long-term wealth." There's there would have been no other deal that you could have continued to, uh, that, that you could go and find the same amount of long-term wealth that, that you just wholesaled. I mean, granted, it's a nice chunk of change. And so you had to pay off the 38. And so you're, in your mind, you walked away with $60,000. Well, it was a little less than that, but yeah. Mm -hmm. But had you rehabbed the house a little bit, and oh, by the way, that sixty thousand dollars probably was all taxable, right? Whereas maybe you could have turned it in and pushed some that tax out through a new note and not paid the tax, and 
rehabbed it for twenty thousand dollars, but made a full sixty, maybe seventy, eighty. But with the interest rate over the life, you would have made an extra hundred thousand dollars. Over the life of that deal, you would have made, we'll say, two hundred thousand oh, yeah. dollars. No, I agree with you. And so the question of it is, is, is you're saying you want to be cash heavy? Yes. And but cash heavy says of it is is that you're wanting to be cash heavy because you really don't want to deal with Green and pay him ten twelve percent interest. So you so you had a house that you already had locked up, less than four percent interest. You know, cash cash heavy isn't going. You've got other people you're borrowing from, and so I don't know why you're so so concerned about being cash heavy. Because, because I don't know I, I I don't know that I've turned you down that many times. No. I don't know I don't know that your other people have turned you down. I mean that many times. No, no, it's it's, it's for uh, owner finance uh, and owner finance and sub to opportunities. You, I can, I can, hey, okay, Rick, I can't come to you and say Look, I need twenty grand to ten to reinstate five. Five to fix, five for whatever. You know, I I need twenty grand to do that deal. The collateral is nothing. I mean, it's, the, the first name position was Wells Fargo. You know, I mean, wh- are you gonna lend on that? You're Am basic- I going to lend on that? Well, I don't know. You're lending. I, my, historically, I haven't. But that may also be then. Of it is of um, you determining how cash heavy you have to be. And or you may have to give different terms on that particular deal. Well, you, normally, what I do is uh, let's say I need twenty grand. Let's say the reinstatement is twenty. Okay, reinstatement is twenty. I need twenty uh, to do the deal. So I try to make sure that the property doesn't need a whole lot to where when I wrap it, I can get twenty and be made whole, and then the spread is the perfect deal. And then yeah. you, so you replenished your cash, right? And you, so you you invested cash in a short time frame to get that cash back, yeah. And, and then you've created long term wealth, right? You create a note, and but you, you see, I I really think that that you're 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 saying you need to be cash heavy to do these type of deals, yes. Or what about well, that lady owner finance that she wanted ten percent down, right? That's fine if she gives me the right terms, I'll give her ten percent down. Um, but I, I, maybe I won't, uh, you're, you're going to have to get more creative and with your private money people and giving something up. But again, you're, you're, you mean through higher interest rates, higher interest rates or a percentage of the profits or a rate plus a percentage of the profits. You're going to have to make those deals enticing to the, the money people. Okay. To the rest no, of the and, world. And, and it works because there's, there's so, so for example, let's say I didn't have the 20. Well, of course, I'd rather borrow than give up the deal, right? And not, do, not make anything, right? So and, that, and or over time, this might be where you have a house or two that is very easy to raise the cash by a collateral assignment of other cash flows. Like cross collateralized? Well, the asset or okay, so oh, just raise the cash from that asset from to, that asset to, to go do this. that, yes, yeah, or like you said, um, basically joint venturing with the well, yeah, I mean, and and you know, people use joint venturing and, and they probably overuse the term, and or that may be of it is is that you have a as your portfolio grows and changes that you have some properties over here that's paying you, but there is no underlying debt. And that's where you go in their attractive properties that, you know, you need to raise $20,000, $40,000, $50,000, and so you go do that, that, that partial. Right. On yeah. that, on that property. So right. they're, they're, because, because the balances are so low, you kind of view them as a, as a, as but but, line you, of credit but when correct. You, need it. you you have to re- you have to start thinking of it is 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 that you know you, and all of this is a learning thing, and we all learn by the school of hard knocks much better than sitting in a classroom. And the unfortunate part of it is, is in a the classroom, there's primarily 
somebody standing up there telling you a story and charging you for theoretically their knowledge. But I understand you doing that, but I'm, I'm of the opinion that you just walked away from $100,000 of long-term wealth in that house that you just described. Of long-term wealth, yes. I agree. So the question of it is, is, is why to... did you walk Well, but it, was there another way of doing that? Yes, I could have done the deal and borrow against the note uh, to to still get 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 money, get 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 liquid. You know, I mean, and and some of this is going to be of it is again. I'm maybe somewhat softening, but I don't know whether it's softening. But if I get to know somebody and I trust them, you know, I don't like. I've never done a second, but if you came to me and said, "Okay, I have," and and I don't know what the documents would look like. But if you had that house and so you had an underlying that was say $500 a month of principal, P-I-T-I, mm -hmm. and you were collecting $500, there might be a way that you do an assignment of that other $500 of cash flow. In lieu of a lump sum. And, 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 and you get the lump sum, that's correct. You know, I mean, there's, there's lots of ways of doing yeah. these types of things. It's, and you don't lose the asset. No, you and you don't point. lose. Well, you don't. You don't lose the long-term wealth creation. Right. Yeah. You only give it up for a few years or so. Um, well, and and there's it, nothing it, it, to say that again. There's nothing to say that that you do that, and the thing says of it is as well. I I did this. But if I want to pay it off early, I have that right, but I will pay you just like I have the prepayment clause the way it is. I'll pay you six months of additional interest, or I'll pay you a year's worth of additional interest because I don't have any other deal flow, and I'm trying to aggregate back and save as much cash as I can, or build my cash back up, or get rid of cash and pay off other debt. I mean, there's, there's all kinds of ways of doing this. Long term, you learning how to manage your debt and the money that you're borrowing is is going to be the secret to all of this. Mm -hmm. And and in some of these deals of it is is and I know that you have there are some people in town of it is that they won't come off of selling a house at 10 12%. Selling a house owner finance at 12 10 12%. Wow, they can they get that much? Well, I, I, the, the most I've got is 10 and a half. Okay. Well, some people in town won't come off from twelve percent. Yeah. Wow. But the reality of it is, is, is if you control the paper, does it make any difference how much of it is assigned to interest and how much of it is assigned to purchase price? You need to really understand that what I sent you of. And again, I, I don't know what right, I Right, yeah, used. because you can lower the purchase price, increase the interest. No, and, and yes, or in this environment, you raise the sale price the, that you're selling it and lower your interest. Right. The borrower, the purchaser, still is, having, is, is still qualifying for the same monthly payment. Your deal looks better to them and to everybody else, and to any regulatory person that would come in, if your interest rate is 8% and you charge them an extra $50,000 for the house, then 10, 12% in this right environment and charge them $50,000 less for the house. Right, the first one seems like you took advantage. Well, you charge them, you charge, the, the interest rate is so easy to determine that it is a gougeable type of rate. Right. The purchase price of it is, well, I don't know what the house is worth. You know, they agreed to do this, but, you know, there are their interest rates right in line. You know, it's not a high price loan. It's not a high cost loan. You know, it's, 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 it's a, only 100% of what they could have got had they had good credit. <laughs> as opposed to 200% over what they would have got if they had good credit. I, you know, I, I still fulfilled their dream of allowing them to be part of the American thing. And the other piece of that of it is, is that if the house is higher priced and prices do appreciate, 
they're going to be less likely in order to get that house to appraise and go get financing elsewhere. The question, you know, you, you don't like, well, you, you worked for Mitch and, and we've talked about moat note servicing. But Mitch is very honest about moat note servicing. He says, we don't report to credit agencies. I worked too hard to put this loan into place. I don't want to do anything to help these people out to pay it off early. Oh my because God. mentally he's looked at of it is, is that I had this house. I sold it for $360,000 payments. So in his mind, he, he wants to collect $360,000 for that house. And he's worked too hard for anybody to have any way of wiggling out and not letting him realize the $360,000 of wealth creation. And so, you know, with where we're at in the cycle, I think that people like yourself, I don't, you know, and, and this maybe is, is trickier on mobile homes, so to speak. But again, you know, some of these mobile homes that you've collected ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars on, to some degree of it is you only hope that you get them back. And that's always been, I think, Mitch's thing. Yeah, he won't say that, but yeah, he probably thinks about it. You know, it. there's been people in town that, that have put clauses in, in their documents to say of it is is that I finance this house and I get first right of refusal before you ever sell it. Well, I've had people say, well, how do you do that? You know, they're already title. I can't help it that they didn't understand their documents. But when, and you have a distinct trigger point. When the title company calls and says, I need to pay off on this. Wait, I got first right refusal. I've got first right refusal. What was the purchase price? What What is the sale price on that house? 104, I'll pay that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. By the way, Tally said he's gonna pay us off. Tally, uh, four thirty Cooper. That that wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, that because that that house is in a hot spot. Yeah, yeah, that thing. I appreciate when I saw you sold that house with eight percent paper, I was a little surprised, to be perfectly honest. That I charged too low. Now it would have made sense charging lower interest rate had you got the price jacked up enough. I don't know whether you did. You yeah, under, I, I, in, I just, in any of this, I'm not trying to be critical. I'm trying to sit here as a business partner and saying, at least try this or at least think about this or at least contemplate this. Yeah, no, I But I mean, Cantrell, that, that was a major screw up when you sold that house. Yeah. I'm not going to criticize you quite as much on South Lake or Southway or whatever it was. Uh, Southway. Where you sold the, the note. note. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, there no, should what be... what I now know, yeah, I wouldn't have sold the note. But, I mean, yeah. you know, selling a note at a discount, I mean, I don't... Uh, again, that tells me of it is you say that you're wanting the cash. You're really looking... You're, you're wanting the cash because you're wanting a way to feed the adrenaline rush that you get of creating another deal. You know, well, Southway at that time, and, and maybe I should have come to to you because at that time I actually needed the cash. Um, it wasn't immediate. But well, I, I think you sold that note to get out of Richard's deal. Um, I think you sold that note to get out of, to, to pay off Richard's deal. Yes, yes. But I think that's what it, I mean. irrespective of yeah. it is, 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 but I should have told you about. Hey, look, Rick, this is what I'm thinking because I, I I know you would have given me a another option where maybe well you know again a... i'm 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 trying to rethink my some of my strategies you know and as i have people that i feel comfortable doing business with and as balances get paid down you know do i feel comfortable enough with the property that i know something about and with the person that you know i've always said that i'd never do seconds but there may be ways to take the whole portfolio and, and, and raise something. I don't know. I mean, what I'm saying of it is is that you're going to have to... Everybody wants to talk about creative. But you need to be able to get creative with your money people the same way that you think that you're getting creative with the other people. Right. Now, your money people aren't going to accept your creative line of bullshit. 
but the, create but your money right. people might accept a good rational business plan mm -hmm. that helps that helps them accomplish their wealth goals the same way yeah good point i mean the the you know, Andrew, you've you you've performed well with me and so i don't have a complaint about that you know i just sometimes i worry that you might be running a little hard and fast you know i don't like subject twos but if you figured out you know how to make them work but once you have a subject two you know i guess the deal's gone but i'm i i don't know that if you had another deal like that that you need to really be thinking about it unless you know unless you think that the market is really going to crack i i, I think there's some, something but, ought to happen i mean people can be living alone. But, but no matter what of it is, is what's the best, what's what's the main selling point in the subject to? The interest rate? Low cost money. Right, low cost money. Yeah. And so even if the market cracks, as long as you have low cost money, okay, so, so the house goes down a little bit. You know, as interest rates go up, there's going to be less and less people to qualify. Owner financing is still going to be part of this world. Oh, yeah. And that's why I like the sub too. So low cost money, you can still wrap at eight, well, nine, ten. So, so that yeah. that arbitrage is what gives us the wealth creation. And, we, and when, when I have rate no arbitrage risk, is is what borrowing money is all about. And we have no money to deal. Where's the risk? Well, you, you collected money, right. and and maybe some of those things of it is all it did was replenish your cost. Right. So whatever whatever the no creation was, that's all gravy. That's. That's, that's and and free money. In a way. And and a portfolio of subject twos only would be questionable. A portfolio that has some subject twos in it is probably a good thing. What's your greatest risk once you've created a sub two deal? Yeah, them calling the note. Them calling the note. And then you've got to be of it is 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 do you you say of it is okay? I'm not going to make the arbitrage on this. But do I know somebody that will bail me out so that I don't? screw this deal up yeah. and, and it gets it gets a lot easier as time goes by because you're you're you're, you're having a, a bigger equity spread and you have the payment history and, and so there's the deal becomes more rational to land on or to rescue than a brand new subject to then that's highly risky nobody wants to touch that yeah, yeah. so so it does it, it does get better over time yeah and, and um but I think there's something coming, Rick. That's the reason I, I, I want well, to... Well, I think it's time to be be a little more walking than running, to be perfectly honest. No, and, and I, I want to just be prepared. I, I, I don't, I don't want to... And, and that being said, and I find it surprising to some degree knowing where I was at one time, the right mobile home lots are still a good place to be. Fifty thousand. You think in this market of that's utilities? All utilities are in place. Fifty grand for half an acre. I, I I wouldn't want to give fifty for a quarter acre, but I I could be enticed fifty possibly. You know, in in a established development with utilities in place for an acre, a half an acre. I don't know. You know, you're going to have to look around and whatever. These quarter acre lots in a rural development, too small. Yeah. Too small. I mean, with all the land we have in the state of Texas, we're going to, I believe we're going to continue to see influx of people into the state of Texas. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And, and, and so, you know, those things, that cheap dirt or that cheaper dirt that already has the roads in front of it and, all, and, and electric lines there and whatnot. You know, again, 50, I don't know, but I mean, you know, especially if you, if you put something on it and sell it owner finance that you always, that you continue to maintain the dirt. I started investigating or thinking about a strategy once of it is, is that you own the dirt, you sell them the mobile, you sell them the mobile home. I call it the deconstructed mobile home park. 
on the dirt, sell the homeowner finance, you pay off the mobile home, then you get the dirt. Then, then you start paying off the dirt. So at that point, you start amortizing on the dirt. But any, but any, any shortcoming before that, you know. You have no risk, it's your land. Yeah. It's your land. Provided you find the right land, because mobile homes are easy to get. It's well, just, it's you know, land. yeah, and all of these things get down to of it is, is you know, you have to be comfortable living with yourself. Doesn't mean that just any old trashed up place, right. you know, will work. But I mean, we're in a couple deals that some of these mobile, some of these places aren't all that bad. So uh, again, but it's. I'm gonna get out of your hair. I'm guessing that was my wife wanting to know. No, good talk, Rick, thank you. Well, don't let anybody else hear what I said because they would probably be offended. That's their problem. Well, I, uh... You know, I have these discussions with you because I think that we can continue to... Um, Do business, absolutely. Yeah, I'm not stopping. If, if anything, I mean, I mean, you, you, um, I'm, uh, I, I want to be prepared via cash, via people. You know, I just want to have more resources so I can, if the opportunity presents itself, I can actually take them. Um, and that's why I want to leverage myself and and, and, and teach others. Um, well, and hopefully they don't leave me. <laughs> I don't. You, you, I, I don't. Why do you want to teach others? What I know, replicate myself so that they can take down deals. Because right now- Why do you want them to take down deals? So that i rather have half their pie than no pie. Well, but you need to, you need, well, you do whatever you want. But it, it's beyond me why real estate investors want to they get good at what they're doing, why they would rather sell seminars than going ahead and building their own wolf pie. That's... No, I don't want to sell a seminar. I just want to recruit people to help me here to, well, to do uh, more uh, deals, uh, to uh, enable uh, me to do more deals. And, and if they want to do deals, great. You know, I'll introduce them to you. Well... But in the meantime, I know they'll bring me two or three deals while they get good enough to do their own deals. Well, but you see, when you say introduce them to me, what you need to say of it is, is, is that that after some period of time, they can remain as a part of the deal. But you remain the primary part. You want to continue to control the deal. Don't give the deals to them. You want to control the deal. They get 25% of the deal, and here are the things that they have to do to maintain being 25% of the deal. And you need to be thinking about, well, if they do want to leave, how do you make it difficult for them to leave. You see, you, the problem of it is, is you're not putting any teeth into any of these things. That if they if they get good at it, that they leave and they don't become a you against Mitch. Maybe you and Mitch aren't competitors. Mitch would probably say that you aren't competitors. But what you need to do of it is, is, is that, that they don't, that you don't introduce them to me so that they go do their own deal you need to say of it is, is after a certain period of time, I will show you the money side of the business and you can remain part of the deal and you can meet my private lenders or whatever the case may be. But you don't want to throw them the carrot right off the bat that, oh, well, you, you go find a deal and, 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 and I'll show you where the money is. What did you get out of that, Yoander? Goodwill. Well, what, is that goodwill going to do what? I mean, if, if you're going to if you're going to change your 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 tithing at the at, at the plate on Sunday because you created goodwill for that person, if you want to look at it that way, that's fine. But I, I guess in, in, in a capitalistic society, I don't know what you're trying to create because of any of those people that you've tried to do that with. How many of them are you still friends with? Partners with? whatever the case may be. 
the kid that you that you gave him half the house that that I financed down there on Meadow something the other. Oh uh, yeah. Um, what's you know, at, at first he was going to bring it, and I wouldn't give him the money because I I was pretty sure he was going to flake. Uh, yeah. Anthony. Anthony. Yeah. But I mean, the question of it is, is is in any of these things, I hear I hear terms being used because you think that they sound good and it makes you a good person. Be realistic about what you're in. You're in business. And, you know, you're willing to teach, coach, bring people along, but you're not going to teach, coach, bring people along and then have them walk out the door and shit on you. You know, if you put them into a deal, you need to figure out what the structure is going to be like of it is, is so that they feel extreme financial pain to leave. Yeah, that's a good point. So they can remain, so they can still keep working, and, and, and we're both doing deals. They're helping me out. But if they decide to leave, those deals that we made together, there's they can feel some pain. There, there's an appraisal, but they get there's a, they, a they get a discounted cost. rate. Yeah. I mean, the first thing of it is is, is yeah, I can buy you out at fifty percent if you live within this many years or so, something like that, so that it's not in their best interest to want to leave so soon. Well, or you will buy them out, but there will be an appraise. If it's an owner finance note, that note will be sent out to be determine what the value of that note is. You won't buy them out at a hundred percent. You won't buy them out at face value. It may be of it is is that I will buy you out after we've sent it out to. First National Bank, I don't know whether you get those solicitations. Yeah, all the time. <laughs> and and Enchanted, do you get Enchanted Mortgage out of, yeah. uh, out of uh, Lubbock? Yeah. But, I mean, you know, you oh, will they'll, send they'll it out to... They'll appraise it at 60% of face value. Well, you send it out that, 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 you know, the buyout provision for that person will be a 10% discount or a 5% discount or whatever to whatever that sale price was. Or whatever that purchase price was from one of them. I mean, if you want to give them, if if you want to give them a hundred percent of that price, but but don't don't never give them the idea that that they can sell that back to you at a hundred percent, because no other arms link transaction buyer will sell it to them at a hundred percent, or will give them a hundred percent. So I mean. You know, I better be careful here because I'll talk too much out of school, but there's some people now of it is, is that they thought that they would circumvent my first right of refusal. How would they be able to do that when you need to provide a payoff? Well, they was going to circumvent it because of the person buying it was buying it at 100%. And I said, no, I have no interest in that. And that set of notes has what's what I call down a pay down provision. I think yours has the pay down provision too. I've never had to exercise it. But the pay down provision is our relationship has gone bad. You are now cherry picking the portfolio, paying me off on the houses, on the properties, on the notes that are easy sales and leaving me holding a bunch of uglies. And so there is a pay down provision that says, if you pay me off due to refinance sale, blah, 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 I can require up to 50% of the excess cash proceeds that you're receiving over my loan balance. To be applied to all this. To be applied to all the rest of them so that you don't cherry pick my ass and then leave me with the debts. Speaking of, and I'm not saying it's a debt, but is there anything happening on Solavo? I, I gotta drive by. I'm, well, Yoander, I'm gonna I'm gonna be mean yeah. here. <laughs> of it is, you gotta drive by. Is is you've entered into this deal and the guy isn't performing. So he the, the last the last conversation we had a, a few weeks ago was that he uh, was having a delay with the permits, and I believe him because the permits can be a pain in the butt. Uh, and but that he had all the electrical plumbing and he was waiting on some other permit and uh, that it would be very quick 
once uh, once he got going. Uh, but I, yeah, I need, well, I need, you say drive by of it is it would appear to me like of it is is that that's a you know you're going to be out and around tomorrow. That's half coffee. I need to be caught up. You know what what are the things? Is there something that I can provide to help grease the wheel? You know whatever the case may be. But you know. And, and maybe he's making your payments for you, but that's that asset still isn't generating the wealth. And if we believe that the market could top at some point, you know, not having it had it on the market to either sell it outright or sell it owner financed, you know, you've missed the marketing opportunity. That tells me of it is is you've got too you've got already got too many notes for you to manage appropriately. You've got too many properties for you to manage appropriately. And you're wanting to delegate all of that responsibility because you're more interested, again, in the adrenaline rush of like finding to, a new deal. I like to create and find. I, I hate managing. It's just, uh, you're, you're right, it wears me down. It's like, I don't want to deal with that. That's why, that's why I like to send it well, over to but, a servicing but company. The, well, and, and that's fine. But, you know, and, and maybe you can get this done, but I, I'm pretty sure that your books and records are a shambles. Yeah, they are. They, and, only and, I understand them. <laughs> and it's, it's like, well, but I'm or, guessing or that they're not in else. QuickBooks or anything. No, I ha uh, no, I have a bookkeeper. She had access to my bank account, so she's the okay. One. Well, the, here's the thing of it is, is the bookkeeper should never have access to your bank account. Well, the how, book is she, how is she going to reconcile all the transactions and look at the checks and all that? Well, okay. The bookkeeper, you 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 needs you need to do the bank reconciliations yourself. You know, and, and, and maybe you get, and, and if you do the bank reconciliations yourself, it may be that with some other approval process that she can actually send the payments. But, you know, so you, ha you, you have to develop some type of approval process of, and, and it may be of it is, is that you have one bank account that you set up, and this is what you pay utilities out of. This is what you pay notes out of, and that the money is always in that account for her to do. Then you have another bank account that is the one-off type of thing that she doesn't have access to. But no matter what, you or someone other than the bookkeeper has to reconcile the, uh, the bank accounts. Because when they, when they get to reconcile their own work, that's when they start setting up phony vendors and paying people inappropriately, of which they get the money. You're going to have to develop a very healthy bit of everybody's a crook, and they will all steal from you. See, I have a... You have to figure out what are the tasks that you can delegate. Yeah. So how do, how do I do that when I like to see the best in people? And I think that everybody can be a great person and there's a, well, a ra it's, it's great a, green inside there you know i don't i don't see you as a crook well i it's really hard for me to picture and, you as a crook. And, 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 well and thank you for that but are crooks typically the people that are still trying to climb to get success or are crooks the people that are already successful People will steal from you when they think you have more than they have. People will steal from you when they think they can get by with it and they need it. Most people don't become thieves. They aren't born to be a thief. They become a thief out of need or out of greed. And so, again, you, you have to figure out the tasks that you can delegate and then what the control processes are that you need to create so that they don't take advantage of you. And it happens up and down the street every day. I mean, who would have ever thought that 10 years ago Bernie Madoff would have created the, the $50 billion fraud that he committed on very intelligent people? Very intelligent people. Actors, senators. But, but those were all people that that were so greedy and were so willing to listen to a story that they delegated way too much. I mean, but Bernie Madoff was a failure of the SEC. But that's, that's you know, yeah. totally beside the point. But, 
But uh, uh, again, you're going to have to, as you get bigger, you're going to have to figure out what you delegate, but what controls that you have to develop in order to make sure that they know that you're watching. And you know, Andrew, people will take advantage. People don't like me because I always ask questions that they don't want to answer. And that I'm not as trusting as what they want. But if you aren't that way, people will steal from you. Or, and steal is a strong word, but they will take from you. They will take, take advantage. I mean, you know, to me of it is the guy on, we started on this due to Sherlavo, of it is, is your agreement with him is a little too loosey-goosey in that you don't have some type of reporting or progress requirement. You know, you say drive by. That could be of it is, is is that, you know, that you look at that of it is is that as Friday mornings you always call people like that and say, you know, what did we get accomplished last this this past week? What do you need from me for next week? And and you could look at that as I've got this other thing over here of it is if you was moving along on Sir Lapo, I have another one that you could joint venture on. But you're, you're going to have to start working some of these things into, uh, maybe you look at this as a partnership recurring relationship as opposed to one-offs. I mean, he stumbled into your life and offered this joint venture. So if he's that good and whatnot, and why wouldn't you be saying of it is, is I, I, I need to manage him on this deal so that he can now become my joint venture rehab guy. Figuring out what that split is, is I don't I don't know. It's whatever you can negotiate. Mm -hmm. But as you get bigger, you're not going to keep as much. The reason people go out on their own, okay, so an accountant or or a lawyer or somebody are the first people, or you in working for Mitch, the first reason that you go out on your own of it is they're billing me out at a hundred dollars an hour and my rate that I'm getting paid is $25, $30 an hour. Yeah. They're making too much off the sweat of my brow. Right. And so you go out on your own and say, you know, I'm better off even if I can only bill at $50 an hour, I'm still 100% better than what I was. I'm keeping all my sweat. <laughs> well, you know, there's some costs that have to go in there, and so whatever the case may be, you've got to now have your own computer and blah, 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 blah. But, I mean... And, and so you, you go through that, but then at some point you get big enough that you have to start giving up and finding the $25 an hour person. And, you know, hopefully you get big enough of it is, is that it, it, over time you need a $75 an hour person. Right. Because that... When you can justify that economically, that means that you're truly having the success. And maybe you can be the adrenaline junkie. <laughs> but, but yeah, you, you like finding and creating the deals because that's who you are. That's, you're more social. Yeah, yes, yeah. I do better on the streets than here behind the computer stand. Well, so, uh, again, you can, do, you can do some of this, but, you know, all of these things of it is, is everything takes more management than anybody typically wants to put forth. Thank you, Rich. I don't know whether it's been better.